here we are, Antarctica on the Union Glacier. Quite frankly, I didn't know exactly what to expect. And you can kind of see behind me the expanse of our camp. And it has more than I expected. You'd have to try really hard to find a complaint about something missing here. Everything from, well, you tell you what, instead of me going through it all, how about I just show you and kind of walk you through it. It's got everything you need and hopefully I can give you an idea of uh, what a day would look like here in Antarctica. We spend most of our time in the dining hall. Not sure on the exact seating, I'd say somewhere between 50 to 70, but it's obviously where you can find people at meals. Afterwards, there is a full library with common area where they do lectures and presentations. If you came to Antarctica with a credit card or some cash, there is a gift store. They have a full shower facility. And of course, with that, they have a bathroom set up as well. I'm not going to take you inside of the bathrooms because I feel like people know what a bathroom looks like. And right next to the bathrooms, they have a satellite phone booth, if you will. You can buy a card and talk to people at back home. There's a collection of cross-country skis and fat tire bikes. And if that doesn't do it for you, you can always hop into one of their highly modified F-550s or vans and you can take day trips. We went out to Elephant Head, looked at the ice, went on a hike, and then we're incredibly fortunate to be able to go watch a Russian Aleutian land on the Blue Ice Runway. I'm not going to say they have an Air Force, but while we were here, there were four planes, two DC-3s, also known as Basilers, and two Twin Otters, of which we jumped out of. And that gets me to what I know everybody wants to see. That's what we're here to do. And they gave us our own packing area, our own planning area, and it was pretty legit. That's the setup down on the ground. Let's take a look at what it looks like from the sky. Yeah, Jericho! So here we are, home sweet home. You might ask yourself, where do you sleep when you're in Antarctica? And the answer is in a tent. And this tent is super simple and I wouldn't have it any other way. You probably can't see it, but there's one more cot on that side. It's matching to this. But the tent itself, and I'm not a tent expert, is a double layer construction. I'm assuming this first layer, which is vented, allows moisture to, and heat to come up and out and dissipate to prevent moisture from gathering along the top scenes. The outer shell is obviously for protection. And it's very bright in here right now because the sun is not gonna go down while we're here. But that brightness is making it 50, maybe 60 degrees in this tent. Completely reasonable when it comes to actually being comfortable and sleeping. Obviously, we have a table in between us, uh, partnered up with Logan for the week. Cot, air mattress, pillow, all provided by ALE, and a sleeping bag, which um, this is like half of the sleeping bag. It's a negative 40 degree rated sleeping bag. And let me just tell you, with the conditions that we've been living in, if you were to sleep in both of those things, you'd probably have a heat stroke episode or a heat casualty. So I found my sweet spot with just one laid over the top of me and zipped up about three quarters. Um, 
But other than that, we're not spending a whole lot of time in here. I've been in here just enough to uh, store my gear away, to change clothes, uh, read a little bit, uh, talk on the inReach. This thing has been absolutely phenomenal. I've been in full communication the entire time over text. And if you want to relax a little bit, because all the beautiful, amazing things that are, are going on here and all the things that we are doing, they're outside. But this is where we're actually sleeping and uh, sheltering from the weather, which there hasn't been any. Well, our time's coming to an end here in Antarctica, and you can see right there on the ground, that's the wind indicator in the drop zone. Clouds have kind of moved in here a little bit, and the temperature has definitely dropped. Um, but this is supposed to clear out. That's what the meteorologist is telling us, and we are going to hopefully be getting up in the aircraft in the next few hours. I'll be the first jumper out, and when my feet hit the ground, timer starts. So, giddy up. Giddy up, clock started.